<laughs> I hope that this uh, film finds an audience with everybody because hopefully it has enough drama that it brings people in immediately. I think the era itself is interesting. I've always been fascinated by the Gold Rush era. I think it's poorly served when it comes to films. It was like the original American dream is, you know, going off, abandoning everything. So people abandoned family and they went off to search for gold. What I really liked about this story, it's very centered on one character since it's the letter that he's writing to his wife. And what I liked about using the letter also was that we could advance the film through time rather quickly and we could get kind of the sense of this guy's character changing. It deals a lot with, you know, how greed and corruption kind of slowly seeks into a person who's innocent at the onset and how it changes them into somebody who's almost unrecognizable. You know, we all have different faces that we show different people and we all have different sacrifices we make for the right reasons in our minds. And, uh, and I think it's really compelling, I truly do. Well, uh, Brandon gave me some homework. We kind of looked at Three Tender Yuma. Um, I also looked at more of the spaghetti westerns for the wides and more of the, um, for the, the shots that we're gonna get for the, the wife is definitely more of a spaghetti western. Um, definitely with the handheld look, as you'll notice through the film with the miners, a 310 to Yuma, more of a, uh, a 21st century kind of handheld shaky look, but still keeping that uh, authentic lighting from the old westerns where, you know, you, you have the gold lighting, you have the wide shots, but still it has an interesting meld of uh, cinematography. Our costume designer and wardrobe supervisor is Bristol Newton and she is fantastic. It was a lot different because it was more uh, realistic. One of the things that she mentioned to me early on was that we had to make sure everything was dirty. Because a lot of times people make period pieces and the costumes look all nice, like they just came out of the costume shop, and they're all clean, and that's not realistic. Um, the funnest part was her dress, definitely, because I actually got to make that one. And just the design that went into it, and fitting it to the actress, and that was just the best part. You're in it when you're in a dress and you're up to your neck or you're whatever. It's just makes all the difference in the world. She made a really nice dress for Brittany, and I'm very jealous that she gets to wear it and not me, so. I've worked with Justin Durbin on, I think, five or six projects. His scores are always perfectly matched with the tone of the film. He brings the films that I work on with him up to another level. And I knew for this film that it had to have a great score. Because it's narrative in the way that it's told uh, through the narration of the letter, there's not a lot of dialogue in the film. We break it up a few times, but most of the film is just the narration. So it has to have a great score that goes along with that to match up and really enhance the visuals that we're showing. This is a short film, but I don't really want it to end with just a short film. At some point, hopefully in the future, I can expand this into a feature length film. I think this character and this time period deserves a really good drama. And I'd love to explore you in the, the section between when he murders the man and when he's caught and what happens there. I'd love to explore even his relationship with his wife before he even goes to California. And even though we did tell a lot of story in five minutes, we couldn't tell the whole story. <laughs>